Hi everyone, my name is Celeste. I'm the homeschooling mom of three boys. If you've seen our curriculum choices videos, you know that in this year we have an eighth grader, a sixth grader, and a fourth grader. For our older two boys, we are using the Essentials in Writing program. This is not the first time we've used it. We have used it in the past, and it's a program that works very well for us. So in this video, I wanted to share an overview of kind of our experience with this program. I also wanna do a comparison between the first and second edition. I'm gonna be using specifically eighth grade level of the first edition, and also the sixth grade level of the second edition. I'll also be sharing a flip through this curriculum as well as stopping to take a detailed look at civic lessons. The eighth grade level will be looking at a persuasive essay. For the sixth grade level, we'll look at a personal narrative. And I'm also gonna show a quick look inside the fourth grade level to take a look at an expository essay, how a full lesson is laid out from start to finish. Essentials in Writing is a program from the first grade all the way up to the 12th grade. If you look on their website, you'll be able to see they have split courses by grade level. So they have lower elementary, which is first to third grade level, upper elementary, which is the fourth to sixth grade level, middle school, which is seventh and eighth grade, and then they have high school, which is from ninth to 12th grade. And Essentials in Writing focuses mainly on composition, but there also is a grammar component as well. One of the biggest structural differences differences between the 8th grade and 6th grade levels is how much grammar incorporated into the course. For the 6th grade level, the way that it's split is that unit 1 is a grammar unit. So your student for half of the year will be going through a grammar unit. Unit 2 is a composition unit. So half of their year will be on grammar and the other half is composition. It does change in the 7th and 8th grade. The 8th grade focuses mostly on composition. Because of the fact that there's not much grammar in this specific course for the eighth grade level is we decided to supplement with a grammar and specifically this year we're going to be using Evan Moore's daily language review which is kind of just a quick daily um, language review for each day if you're interested in seeing a look inside this booklet you can let me know I'd be more than happy to do a flip through this curriculum specifically does have video instruction so for every single lesson there is a video instruction that goes along with it there is the option of getting your video lessons in CD format so this is an example they would come right in the workbook the CDs and they have have all of the lessons for um, the entire course or you could decide to do an online streaming option and so they have both, both of those options that you could choose what would work best for your family. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you a look inside. Okay, so this is look inside the Essentials in Writing curriculum. First, we're going to look at the eighth grade, which, as I mentioned, is the first edition. And then we'll also take a look at the sixth grade level, which is the second edition. And then we'll also be grabbing the fourth just to look at one of their lessons as well. When you open up inside the eighth grade level, it starts with a letter to the parent and teacher. There's also information about how to score compositions if you choose to do it yourself. Um, and then the next page is a suggested approach. This is very helpful, I think, when you're trying to organize your week. It has four steps when you're working through the curriculum. The first is to look at the worksheet assignment each day. So when your student grabs their book, they can look at their assignments. Then the second step would be to go and watch the video instruction. So they watch their video, then the next would be to actually go back and complete the assignment and then take a look forward kind of to the following lesson. So there's a little bit of information on how long they can spend on each lesson. Um, I find that it doesn't take long at all, um, but it's really great because they're building up as they go along. This is the syllabus for the eighth grade. So it has all of the lessons that are covered, starting with what is writing, sentence structure, complex sentences, then different writing styles. So descriptive writing, formal paragraphs, expository, persuasive, compare and contrast, and it continues. So this is kind of how it is laid out. And you do finish with a research paper at the end of the year. There are 64 lessons. This kind of works out to be about 150 classes, which could turn out to be about 30 weeks. So one thing about this eighth grade level is that it is not really for a complete um, school year if you do a 36 week school year. I figured it's probably about 30 weeks of work depending on how you decide to split it out. They do have an optional 34 week plan in case you would like to use it in conjunction with the literature. We have never used the literature as I mentioned. So in this plan, they actually have you taking breaks on certain weeks and just doing literature. So 
Um, there is this plan if you decide to use both together, but again, they would not be doing it every single week. So in our case, this actually worked out to just about enough work for us up to February. So we are doing this four days a week, Monday through Thursday up to February. After that, what we're going to be doing is kind of some research writing projects kind of for the last few months of the year. But I did want to say that is one of the differences that you will find first edition of the eighth grade level versus the second edition of sixth and fourth grade, which I both have used, which are much longer, which I'll be showing you that covers more of the year. So looking at a persuasive essay, I kind of just wanted to walk you through one example from each level. This is lesson 33. So the first thing that he has here is kind of a example so the student can read through. Again, there is also the video lesson that goes with it. Then it talks about the parts of a persuasive essay. Then you move on to the organizer. There's a lot of grad different graphic organizers that are used to help your students um, organize their thoughts before completing their composition. The next you go into the body of the paragraph. So the graphic organizer that they use to make their opening sentence, their argument number one, detail, show the example, argument number two, detail, show the example, and their closing sentence. For the first body of the paragraph, and then they do the same for the second as well as the third. Then they kind of start a new lesson. So there's a new video instruction for lesson 35. They start the drafting process. So they draft their persuasive essay. It has different examples here as well. There is some more instruction for them to begin drafting their essay. And you go on to lesson 38. So this is the third lesson. So it'd be another video for this topic of persuasive essays. Then they look into the revision process now that they have drafted. So they'll be right, revising word choice, sentence structure, their editing and publishing, their final draft. And at the very end of each type of writing style, there is a checklist so the student can go through or you can go through with them to make sure that they have completed all the elements for that specific writing assignment. So that is an example of how it's laid out. There is also a scoring guide here for their um, for their essay. The very last thing is a research paper. So they're able to choose, narrow a topic from the choices here, and then it walks them through the process to be able to complete a research paper for the end of the year. At the very end of your book is the answer key. So the answer key is right in the book. So you can decide if you'd like to leave it in or if you'd like to rip that out. This is another difference between the first edition and the second edition. In the second edition, it's not included in the student work text. And I'll show you what I mean when we look through the sixth grade level. This is a sixth grade level. It is the second edition. I mentioned there is a separate teacher handbook. So this is not included in the eighth grade level, but this is included in for the sixth grade. And we also had it for the fourth grade. So both of the second editions that we have used had this additional teacher kind of booklet. It's very thin. It's just like an answer key, but it has that letter to the teacher in the beginning, has the structure, it explains all the different icons that are used within the course and within the book here are the tips for scoring compositions and then that page that i reviewed about how you use the curriculum the steps that they kind of recommend then here is the syllabus and then there is the answer key so this is the all the answers for the workbook so that's kind of in a little separate teacher book so when you open the book to the table of contents as i mentioned this level or the levels up to sixth grade as far as i understand have a grammar unit and then also has a composition unit so unit one which is the grammar unit reviews parts of speech tools for effective communication and it has all these subtopics that it includes within there so that's lesson one 
to lesson 32. At lesson 33, you start unit two, which is the composition unit. Paragraphs, personal narrative, persuasive personal letter, writing a summary, compare contrast writing, expository essays, and also they finish with a research project as well. If you notice, there are 78 lessons, so this is much longer. And if you compare the thickness of the two books, you'll see it is much, much thicker. I would say it's actually about 100 pages more of content in the sixth grade level as well as the fourth grade. So I don't know if that's something that's just with the second edition or if it's just for that level. So um, but that is one difference. This specifically, this sixth grade level is going to take us pretty much to the end of the year. And we are doing it four days a week. So it's enough um, to definitely be a full year's worth of work. Different, as I mentioned, from the eighth grade levels. One thing that's um, really great about this level, if you notice, it says lesson seven, one, two, it has those little boxes. It just shows how many days you're working on that lesson. So this is also part of day two, this is day three. And all of that is lesson seven. Also part of day three. And then you start a new lesson, day one of lesson eight. So that makes it really easy when planning. So you have know how many days is actually um, in one lesson. So you're not doing one lesson per day. Um, one In many cases, a lesson can be broken up between multiple days. So again, there is just one video per lesson just as it was in level eight. So if you're doing lesson 12, on day one of lesson 12, you'll watch the video, but then on day two, there is no video. Um, again, your child can always go back and rewatch the instruction if they have any questions, but there is just one video per lesson. And here it says to complete the unit one comprehensive assessment. That is if you have decided to go ahead and purchase the additional assessments. Again, that is not included. That would be an additional purchase. We never have used them as I mentioned, um, but that is something if you'd like to have them, you can go ahead and purchase those additionally. Then unit two starts the writing process. You begin the writing portion of the course. So I wanted to show you a look inside the personal narrative of this specific level. So the first thing, this is on lesson, this is lesson 44. There is an introduction. Then there is the brainstorming process, the process of organizing your thoughts. Here is another graphic organizer. Let's see if I can flip this over. Um, to organize the events, being that it's a personal narrative, you're going in the order of the events of the special day or what you're sharing about. And then here you're starting the personal narrative draft. There are some ideas for some common transitions and there's some space here for your draft. So the revision process, then here adding in dialogue. So dialogue is one of the lessons that they already would have learned if they show them the correct way to add in dialogue to their personal narrative. And their final draft. And again, there is a checklist for them to verify that they have done it. At the end of every type of writing style, there's also an extra practice section, which is an additional essay that they can practice that specific style of writing. So for example, if you notice that your child need a little more work on personal narratives, before moving on to the next topic, you can take some time and do this extra practice section. Great, one thing that is included as well is that they show when each assessment is due. This would be assessment 22. Again, if you decide to use the assessments. This course also ends with a research project that your child will do. And that is the end of the course. 
I also wanted to show you one of the lessons from the fourth grade level. We are not using this this year. We used this actually in previous years, but I did have a, one lesson in the back that my son had not completed. So I wanted to show you that one so you can get a sense of maybe how things are laid out in the fourth grade level in case you're looking for that level of learning. So this is an example of the expository essay for the fourth grade level. Again, this kind of just shows the opening the brainstorming process is very similar. Fourth grade also does end with a research project as well. If you notice, a lot of the content among the three levels is very similar. So if we did this every single year, for us specifically, it could be a little repetitive, which is why in our How We Use a Becca video, I mentioned that for our older two boys, we have used kind of a rotating schedule. So one year they've used a Becca, the next year they use Essentials in Writing. The year after that, they use a Becca than essentials in writing. If you haven't seen that video, I'll be sure to link it in case you want a little more detail about how we do that rotating schedule and what we do to supplement grammar and writing on, on each year. Okay, so that is a look inside the essentials in writing program. Again, it's a program that has worked very well for us for our older two boys. What is your favorite writing curriculum? I know there are so many out there, but if you have found something that works for your family, please feel free to share in the comments below. I pray that you and your family are well. I pray you are blessed. I thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos and I look forward to talking to you soon.